as the last thing say. you want is a YouTube thumbnail with woke question mark in the <laughs> With the recent events of Kotaku, it's absolutely clear that gaming journalists really hate YouTubers. I've been the victim of these sort of woke scold journalists in the past, posting things that weren't true about me. One article claimed that I was a figurehead of Gamergate. I wasn't even on YouTube in 2014. I've been a very busy man. How was I even in the mix? Well, anyway, current times. I saw this string of angry tweets from some dude named Jordan. I'm guessing he's a games journal. And he's having a bad go of it, lovey. When all of games media is gone, what are talentless hack YouTubers going to read out verbatim for many thousands of pounds? Yes, reading a Kotaku article is going to make you rich. Is he talking about who I think he's talking about? Uh-oh, young out. I can't imagine anything less interesting than your sick burns about Kotaku in 2024. It's dead patter and not even my point. The same could be about dozens of great sites that have been killed or being killed by executives with no clue. Your favorite site could be next. And if your response is, I don't read games media, I get my news from YouTube aggregators. Please for one minute wonder where they get their news from. I'll stop going on about it because this is mega tedious, but we're sleepwalking into a world where all of the information about games comes from gaming companies themselves. And if you think that's a good thing, I'd recommend going to the hospital immediately. Well, my good lad, Jordan, the hospital's a bit Expensive here in the States it is. I know emotions are high right now, but this isn't a good take. This poor man's having a conniption and MBG tried to speak sense into him. But as you can imagine, the rage train kept on a rolling. Oh, by the way, uh, there were a lot of people that wanted to know about the Herb comment made by Jen Glenn or whatever her name is. This is an inside joke from journalists that work for Gawker, etc. Gizmodo, you get the point. They think calling Jim Spamfeller a Herb gets under his skin. Yeah. I'm sure on his private jet, he's crying into his piles of money while you're looking for new work. Yet another GO Media top editor quits, lashes out at Herb CEO. In 2019, GO Media Sports blog Deadpan received media attention when all of its writers and editors resigned after the edict given by upper management to stick to sports. Wow, how terrible. Post mocked Spanfeller as a Herb after being wildly shared on social media. So there you go. Someone got fired at Deadspin. They called him a herb. The posters are moved, and now everybody who gets fired by Geo Media now thinks calling Spanfeller a herb is a sick burn. Yeah, it's not really interesting. It's kind of sad. I noticed while all of this Kotaku crap was going down, I was blocked by a lot of journalists, quotation marks. None of these people I've ever spoken to or even added, but this shows that I live rent free in their minds. That the very idea of seeing a tweet from me in their timeline is unbearable. To my surprise, Alyssa Mercant or whatever her name is, was among the many that blocked me. I guess my Starbucks dig in my last video was a little too close to home. Little did I know that that was being generous. To say that she's been on a quest for cloud is an understatement. Her her groundbreaking news coverage on Sweet Baby Inc. and the constant engagement with people on Twitter trying to stir up drama endlessly was so tiresome for anyone that was more mature than a 15 year old, to say the least. Her sad attempts at baiting Grums and then blocking him and unblocking him, total cringe dude. And with this mess of Kotaku's editor-in-chief failing, she's taken it upon herself to hit the center stage. As you remember, her tweets supporting the editor-in-chief leaving while holding on to her job, to now talking to higher-ups. Kotaku staff had a somewhat productive meeting with management. Expect news to continue coming for us, at least for now. Your support and your voices have certainly helped. Thank you so much. 361 likes. My God, I've never seen such an amazing grassroots movement. I'd be remiss if I didn't credit Hello Jen Glenn for seeing the tide shift and refusing to ride along with it. Her bravery is a huge part of why today went the way it did. Give her all the flowers and all the jobs. I doubt that Jen quitting changed much, to be honest. It seems like editors constantly quit Geo Media whenever they crack the whip and demand that people in their subsector of a job do their job. I bet Alyssa smelled a shot at a promotion, and that's why she didn't jump ship, because now I think she's one of the senior editors. And even Grums makes a point as well as saying this is most likely a possibility. Kotaku's editor-in-chief resigns, leaving a power vacuum at the top. Alyssa and Carolyn Panette are the only editors left that would be next in line for the promotion. Alyssa convinces Geo Media to let her continue to write news while Kotaku pivots to gaming guides. She cites her prior hit piece on Kabutis Rambo was the second highest traffic article on Kotaku. Now that leads us to 
Alyssa contacting Melanie Mack in a very odd change of pace, but it'll all make sense in a second. There's a story I've been simmering that I really want to pick back up again. If anyone has any connections to a prominent female Twitch streamer slash gaming personality who leans very hard into Christianity and homophobia, DM me or email me a link in the bio. Melody Mac obviously catches wind and says, you know, you could always just talk to me if you want, but it looks like you'd rather find people who don't like me to help you formulate some hate and lies to fit a narrative you've inevitably made up in your mind for your witch hunt. Melody Mac has already called it. Hi, Melanie. I would love to talk to you. My email's in the bio. If you want to reach out, I plan on sending one your way earlier next week as it's EOD for me. Thanks. This seems disingenuous because Alyssa wanted to fight Melody Mac for the creator's clash, which it's funny on so many levels because no one knew who the hell she was during the creator's clash and the few people that know who she is now don't care. Alyssa clearly has an ax to grind and a desire for clout that anyone can see. And it's as clear as day. Grum summed it up perfectly. This is not journalism. It's anger and a power play. Exactly. Alyssa knows that the writing's on the wall. Kotaku's days are numbered. Kotaku doesn't hire the best and brightest. They hire politically charged activists just driven by confirmation bias. Since... The Sweet Baby Inc. article dropped. Alyssa has been promoting herself nonstop and doing interviews wherever she could. You would think she was a Pulitzer Prize winner. And while doing these interviews, she paints a very one-sided view of the Sweet Baby Inc. controversy. Here's her interview from CBC Listening. The controversy started when Sweet Baby Inc. employees, a woke game consulting company whose sole mission is to push the agenda in any games they get their hands on. They're all about diversity and equity and inclusion. They lay that out. They said they want to take over the games industry. They hate white, straight male gamers. In reality, Sweet Baby Inc. is hired by the video game companies to consult on stories and help write diverse characters, including, for example, the Miles Morales character in the most recent Spider-Man game, who is black. Oh no, Ryan Kennel. Yeah, he's a bigot. Burn him alive. And even worse, he's a male. You know what's strange about Ryan? He looks like a man and a child at the same time. So it makes his anger very precocious. He's like a middle-aged Dennis the Menace. Are they swapping out, you know, white Spider-Man for black Spider-Man in their games? <laughs> no, they are not. White Spider-Man and black Spider-Man were both in Spider-Man 2. If that's not the case, then why are people focused on this tiny Canadian company? I mean, there are a number of, as I understand it, a number of companies that do that kind of narrative design work. Yes, they are replacing Spider-Man with Miles Morales, bro. The next game is going to make Miles the main character. So the gamers that are upset with this are right. Peter Parker is being replaced. And Alyssa doesn't seem to know that, which is wild. Oh my god. Someone at Sweet Baby noticed that this account was made on Steam and noticed how it was gaining traction and noticed that it was um, intended to prevent people from buying and playing these games and requested that it be taken down for organized harassment. And that kicked off um, even more organization from them, the people who made the Steam group. And then it just kind of leans into the conspiracy theories that plague the internet that plagued the first iteration of this movement against wokeness or women or people of color in games and, you know, ultimately led to the playbook of the Trump White House. Shut up, silly woman. See how she rewrites history? Chris, the Sweet Baby Inc. developer, whatever the hell he was, was always starting sh people on Twitter. Most famously, he was starting crap with Kyle on Twitter and calling him broke and dusty and all sorts of things. Now, if Chris never went after Sweet Baby Inc. detected, none of us would have known it existed. On top of that, he tried to get it taken down with false reports. He literally said report the f*** out of this guy to get him to lose his Steam page. This is a Streisand effect. Everything happened because of the hubris of that man. It wasn't just random gamers pitchforking some stupid company we all knew sucked. Nobody cared beforehand. And as you can see, Melissa is clearly dishonest with the events that led up to the Streisand effect I just mentioned. So how can you trust her journalism? It's clearly biased. I'm sure that there are people in the Sweet Baby Inc. Detective group that might be a little wonky but that's every group in the damn world dude on top of that she said herself if her journalism career doesn't pan out she'll go back to Adelaide. yes that's right i'm not even joking here are a few tweets that have recently picked up some steam i am now best friends with a miami stripper named penny we are quoting tiktoks while jiggling her boobs it'll be an easy transition for me i'm just gonna go back to because at least when i get a lot i get paid for it well she's gone back to whoring 
Oh God, if I ever get fired, I'm going back to bartending and sex work. This industry. Happy International Whores Day. I used to be a cam girl. Work is work. Let me be clear. Fans good. Sex work is work. I do not want to invalidate that in any capacity. Thank you for bringing this to my attention and I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. Uh, Pancakes Bricks. Alyssa would rather sell her ass in the streets than write video game guides laughing my ass off. Demonizing work. Harassing women who speak out exponentially more than men. At least bring your misogyny out of the mad men era. Yawn. What Pancake Brick was pointing out is how your go-to if you get fired from Kotaku is to go back to work, which by your own admission is the only thing you can do that is profitable for you. It also speaks volumes for how much worse Kotaku actually is than we ever imagined. Gone are the days of Jason Schweier. Now we have ex calls with attitudes. <laughs> Welcome to 2024. Oh, she replies to this tweet again. I'm laughing my ass off. How are you going to dem demonize <laughs> when your entire personality hinges on wanting to crank it to every chick in a video game? The math is not mathing. She thinks she's so funny and witty. But she comes off as just so cringe to anyone that isn't terminally on TikTok. Yes, all male gamers that wanted to see an attractive Mary Jane more accurate to the comic book depiction of their most beloved character. Everyone's favorite redhead. No, if they wanted that, they only wanted to yank their crank to her. Of course. Let's just all pretend that the queer fan base for Baldur's Gate aren't pumping out enough Rule 34 to last 10 lifetimes. It's only the straight white male gamers that are the sex pest and fiends. Okay, lady, you got us all. And I'm not even white. I've had enough of this, too. It is 12 midnight, and I've killed enough brain cells looking at this.